All righty. Uh, we'll continue on with our program then tonight. Uh, third on our agenda is Gordon Smith. And Gordon grew up in Connecticut, and he's going to give us a little uh, sample of his hometown railroad, which is the Central Vermont. Gordon had a 50-year career in railroading. That's right, five zero years uh, started. Uh, well, he can tell you a little bit about it, but uh, she was, he, you know, he started on the D&H and then just stayed with them and went through a, a bunch of iterations and um, uh, ended up retiring from Canadian Pacific a couple of years ago. So Gordon, Gordy, do you, you, you ready to go? I think so, Mike. Wonderful. Welcome to the Wisconsin chapter of the National Railway Historical Society. Uh, the stage is yours. Thank you, sir. Well, as Mike said, uh, I was uh, born and raised in Connecticut, a little town called Stafford Springs, which is uh, right here on the CV main line. Um, and uh, the central Vermont ran from Cantic, Quebec on the northern end, uh, right through the central part of Vermont into a corner of New Hampshire, uh, back into Vermont at Brattleboro, then into uh, Massachusetts, um, and into Connecticut down to the southern terminus here at New London, Connecticut. And uh, I spent a lot of time when I was a kid hanging out at the freight house, got to know all the agents. One of the agents, spare agents, lived with my, uh, he rented a room from my aunt when I was putting this program, this pro program together, I was planning I'd do with the whole railroad, but I just have too many. I got over 500 chats of the railroad through the years. And so I'm going to take you just from uh, starting at St. Albans, which was the CV's main yard in uh, northern Vermont, down to uh, White River Junction, which was the crew change point on the north end of the railroad. They changed crews, went from White River to... Uh, down to Brattleboro, then they used to, well, actually down to uh, Palmer, Massachusetts, and then they had another crew from Palmer to New London. We'll start out, uh, we'll start out with the, uh, starting in, uh, I'll take you north to south, uh, starting out in St. Albans, their main yard was called Italy Yard. Uh, it's still utilized today by the New England Central. Um, all these shots are all of the CV. I haven't done anything with the New England Central. Um, Excuse me, Gordy. Yeah. Can you make that full screen, please? Oh, okay. The, uh, those, uh, those diagonal arrows uh, in the top right. Uh, there we go. Thank you. Ah, there we go. Okay. There's a couple uh, of their uh, SW-1200s that they used as uh, yard engines in St. Albans, making up uh, the through train 444. Uh, at this time, uh, the two trains, the northbound was 447 and the southbound was 444. Usually had a lot of, uh, a lot of newsprint um, until that started to piddle away. And today, the New England Central today is only running like three or four times a week. The traffic is down so so they're actually typing right that's cool so he can't hear me and this is one of their other yard engines a lot of times uh, uh they had two yard engines working uh, uh one switching and one you know doubling making up the train here's one of the other ones making up the uh the cn portion of the train. Um, when 447 got in, they took out the local cars and the um, Canadian National crew would get on at St. Albans and take it through to Montreal. This is uh, one of the trains that they still run today on the New England Central is a chip train that runs um, from Swanton, Vermont, with wood chips over to the Burlington uh, um, Burlington Power Plant, Burlington, Vermont. 
This is the northbound coming back with the empty chip cars <clears throat> with a couple of the ex North Winnipeg and Pacific RS 11s passing the uh, the old station in St. Albans. There used to be a train shed here at all in the passenger days. Today, this is uh, the Genesee and Wyoming's main office building. All their dispatchers for the Genesee and Wyoming Railroad are dispatched out of this uh, building in St. Albans, Vermont. Here's train 444 departing um, St. Albans. You can see the office building in the background. And this is uh, 444. Um, at Oakland, uh, Vermont, uh, taking off the interstate. From what I hear tell from guys today, um, this is all, all this brush in the foreground has grown, grown up quite a bit. So um, can't get, uh, I don't think I haven't been up there in years, but I doubt unless it was winter time that you'd be able to get this shot today. And quite often when the tonnage warranted, uh, they used a couple of pups on as pushers out of St. Albans up into, up over the hill to Roxbury, where they'd cut off and go back to St. Albans. And they used to have CV cabooses, but you know, towards this period of time, the CN caboose usually ran ran through with the U.S. Uh, um, version of the the caboose. Uh, this is just south of St. Albans. Um, right off uh, Highway 7. And the northbound chip train, cows were more uh, interested in me than they were the train. And the CV crossed many bridges on the north end of the railroad. Uh, this one, first one going south is the Georgia High Bridge, in Georgia, Vermont. I always kind of like this shot where it was, it was a rainy day, but rain or shine, my buddy Bob and I would go out and shoot the train and uh, yielded some pretty good shots with a little help from Photoshop. And here you've got, uh, at the time, this was, uh, well, you had the Montreal that ran all the way to Montreal, and then it got cut back to St. Albans. This is, this is after it was cut back. This is the Vermonter going south over the Georgia High Bridge. And uh, that's the empties coming north over the Georgia High Bridge, the uh, train with a couple of RS-11s. This is northbound 447 uh, from another angle of the Georgia High Bridge. And coming south uh, uh, here at um, Milton, Vermont, you can see the old CV uh, wooden brace box car there. And what the guys tell me, it's still sitting there in the, in the siding at Milton. This is 444 going south. Track speed, uh, track speed at the time was 40 mile an hour. I, I think the New England Central is lower than that, except uh, the north end uh, where Amtrak runs, uh, it's probably still 40. But it was a good chase. After uh, New Haven uh, became part of Penn Central, Penn Central wanted the uh, they wanted to change the interchange point from New London to Springfield, Massachusetts. So the CV got together with the boss of the Maine and they they ran 444 uh, from St. Albans to White River Junction, and the B and M crew took it over and ran it to Springfield, Mass, to deliver the train to uh, to the um, New well, to Penn Central. And at this time, they ran B and M power um, intermingled with CV power on 444 and 447. This is coming through Milton with the GP7 leading B and M G7. As at Milton uh, with 444 meeting 447. My friend Bob and I used to use White River Junction as our kickoff point. Uh, stay overnight there and catch 447 wherever it was. We'd Go until we uh, caught up to it. A lot of times we caught it right out of White River. And we'd follow it north until we got 444 and followed that back south. This is a meet, uh, they didn't get too far 
Um, they got all the way to Milton. Most of the time they went all the way to St. Alban before the 444 departed. Is it Colchester, Vermont, um, of the local freight that was going to Burlington with a couple of RS-11s? And we come down to Essex Junction, which is train 447 northbound, coming around the curve at uh, Essex Junction. This track to the right is the Winooski sub that went over to Burlington, Vermont, where the chip train um, operates. There's a loaded chip train on the Winooski sub, not too far south of Burlington, Vermont. With a Jeep, uh, Jeep 9 in the lead. And same train going, going away with the, the river uh, on the left-hand side. And you can see, uh, see some, of the, some of Burlington's structures in the background. And at Essex, uh, they had an operator. It was uh, CV was all train ordered territory until um, G and W. It's now uh, track work, but <clears throat> here's the operator getting ready to hoop orders up uh, to the southbound at Essex Junction. And as a um, one of the uh, trains going south, just south of Essex Junction, with a um, what was a Grand Trunk uh, Jeep Nine and hastily re-lettered the CV. This Canadian National did a lot of uh, swapping of power between the CV, the Grand Trunk, and the DWP. And uh, here's one of the DWP RS-11s uh, right after it got, uh, after it come down from uh, the DWP and was reassigned to the CV. And this is, uh, this is between Essex Junction and uh, Richmond, Vermont. And that mountain in the background is called Camel's Hump. This is the northbound 447, doing every bit of track speed up through here. And coming through Richmond, um, from, what I, from what I understand, all these tracks are gone except the main line today. As the northbound at Richmond, that general store is still there. Uh, always made a nice backdrop for the northbound trains. So this is at Bolton, Vermont, across uh, the Winooski River. Um, I'm right up the Just before we took this picture, there was a moose take, uh, drinking water here. We, we were hoping he'd stick around for the train, but he ambered on out of the picture by the time the train showed up. Uh, the caboose behind the power was, uh, you see some ballast cars. That caboose was for a work train that they set off at White River Junction. And uh, south of Richmond, uh, Jonesville, this guy had just set off a, a car in the green facility there at Jonesville. And he was, uh, um, he was really, Matching them out sounded great. And you see the rear end of his train as they curved around the um, Winooski River. Now, uh, this is uh, just uh, south of, or just north of Duxbury with the, the B&M power taking off the interstate. And uh, one of the more popular uh, bridges was the Duxbury Bridge in Duxbury, Vermont. And uh, we always tried to shoot a train on the Duxbury Bridge, especially in the fall when all this was uh, all ablaze in color. And you can see he's got a grand trunk Jeep 9 in the middle there. And this is a piece on uh, approach to the Duxbury Bridge. First time I got a, a contest, a solid contest of the RS-11s. I used to intermingle them at the beginning when they got them, but they found they worked best when they um, they put them all together as one solid set. This is one time I was able to catch uh, five of the RS-11s leading 444. And uh, next south is the town of Waterbury. 
Uh, it's an Amtrak stop today, and they've totally redone this station. It looks pretty good. When I was there about five years ago, this is 447 going north by Waterbury. And this is 444 going south. And a couple of the um, SW-1200s on a work train um, at Waterbury pulling in, uh, pulling in the siding. I was in the, uh, oh, the paint scheme of the late 70s with the uh, black, red with the big noodle on the side. My least favorite of all their paint schemes. And this is a Middlesex, Vermont, around the big curve. And the CV, uh, CV did all their, their own uh, engine work there in St. Albans, and they had a paint shop there. And they experimented in the mid 80s uh, with swapping the colors around and making the, the yellow nose with the green stripes on the nose for visibility uh, purposes. I kind of liked it. It was uh, pretty neat. It's the old station there at Middlesex. And as you can see, he's got some um, uh, um, CN M420s trailing in the consist. Used to, uh, in the mid 80s on, they, we saw quite a bit of the M420s running through on the CV. And the low nose uh, GP9 in the new uh, paint scheme, the new nose going by Montpelier Junction. Um, the uh, railroad never went right through uh, the town of Montpelier, but there was a branch line um, from Montpelier Junction over through the city. Um, and it went up, to, uh, the last it was used was up at the, uh, for the Bombardier plant outside of, uh, in Barrie, Vermont. This is just south of Montpelier Junction. Uh, northbound 447, um, beautiful spot with this, uh, always like the, the farm and this house made a good backdrop for these uh, northbound trains. A little bit south of that uh, is uh, 444 going south over, uh, over the river, through the woods. Then he's, uh, he's doing every bit of uh, 40, 45 mile an hour here. Yeah, this is a Riverton. Um, at 444 with the, uh, with the new paint scheme in the lead and a couple of grand trunk, a couple of grand trunks and the M420 trailing. And then we come into, this was 447 northbound going by Northfield, Vermont. Uh, at one time years ago in the steam days, in this uh, area, this big area over here, CV had uh, had shops, um, erecting shops there in Northfield. And that's, uh, Northfield's the town of uh, Military Academy, a boys military academy called the Northfield Academy. 447, or 444, I'm sorry, going south, going by the old station, which at that time was a bank. I don't know if it still is or not, but uh, this is the beginning, uh, beginning of the big grade up to uh, Roxbury. They're working pretty good uh, through here and all the way up to the, to the summit. And just south of Northfield, uh, uh, it was a private road that went up uh, uh, to get this shot of the bridge going over the highway in a little stream. Um, I always wanted to do that shot, but about the time I was getting ready to shoot this, this big dog from the private residence come barking down. I thought he was going to bite my big ass, but I lucked out. He was pretty friendly. This is that uh, job. It was it was misting pretty good, but that's the uh, five set RS-11 getting close to the top of Roxbury. Uh, 444 with Jeeps uh, going by the pond. Um, same location, but on the other side of the tracks uh, at Roxbury. And uh, the 444 with the B&M uh, power is um, going by the north switch at Roxbury and meeting, uh, meeting the local freight. 
who's in the siding and the conductor is going down to, or the brakeman is going down to throw the switch after 4.44 um, cleared. And this is the Roxbury station. And that's, uh, he's just about at the top. Uh, after he gets by the station, the track starts downgrade. It's downgrade uh, from flat all the way into White River Junction. And we got the M420s leading 444 by Roxbury. That's a private residence uh, today. It was then too. And going through Roxbury, they've got a couple of nice churches. Made a nice backdrop for 444. This is 447 northbound. Uh, uh, he's uh, just over the uh, south switch at Roxbury. And uh, these are some uh, go transit cars, which the MBTA had uh, on uh, lease for a little while out of Boston, and they're making a return to Canada on the rear end of 447. Wow, well, this is uh, going uh, with the Vermont countryside. I used to always try and get up there. Bob and I used to try and get up there every year um, in October to shoot the foliage. There's nothing like Vermont State for their fall foliage. And uh, this is a brain tree, Vermont, 447. And then we drop down to Randolph, Vermont. Don't station at Randolph. I don't know what, it's still there, but I don't know what they're using it for today. And next uh, is Bethel, Vermont. Uh, this is the agent's car. There's still an agent there, uh, although the, uh, the train order signals are no longer in use, but I believe that's the agent sitting there on the step of the station uh, doing a roll by of 447. And uh, there's a overpass, uh, highway goes over the tracks here at Bethel. And you see the feed mill in the background in the station. And then we drop down to uh, Royalton, uh, Vermont. So northbound 447 coming by Royalton. And uh, this is uh, northbound 447 with the Grand Trunk. A lot of times they rent, they use the Grand Trunks as leaders, um, but he's crossing the White River at Hartford, Vermont. And on the other side of the bridge, uh, 447 going north over White River. And just north of that, this is a West Hartford, Vermont, going around the big curve. Got a couple shots here. There's a nice, uh, um, this uh, bridge is still there from what I see on Google Maps. A wooden bridge made a great backdrop for uh, trains coming through under the bridge. And here I took it, uh, I pulled off on the highway and we shot the northbound 447 from the interstate. And 447 pulling down for his crew change at White River Junction. Stay, uh, White River Junction was quite a, quite a hub um, in the uh, old days with the B&M and the Central Mott. The B&M went uh, a couple different ways. Um, and the CV had a big yard, fairly good sized yard at White River. Um, today, it's uh, the yard is still there. The B&M yard is pretty much uh, not much left down in the south side of town, but station is still there in good shape. And it's uh, Amtrak's Vermonters uh, station stop in White River. As far as I know, this display is still there. Uh, with the B&M, the old Boston Maine caboose at White River. With the, low, uh, the yard engine or local freight, whatever it was at the time, um, getting ready to uh, swap out a caboose 
take the CV caboose off and put the um, CN caboose on. And a view of uh, the CV yard, the roundhouse is gone now. I don't think the turntable is there, but it might be. Um, but this is 447, making a pickup, getting ready to double to his train to go north. And that's one of the CV's uh, cabooses. And uh, the chip train coming off the Winooski sub at Essex Junction. I just use that as an ending shot with the CV caboose. Um, always kind of liked it. Railroads today just aren't the same without a caboose. And that's the end of it. Thank you, Gordy. Round of applause for you. Excellent program tonight. Thank you. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments uh, for Mr. Smith? Gordy? Yeah. Question. I have never photographed that railroad. Is it the CN owns it now, right? Pretty much? No, or the CN, CN got rid of it back in 1995. Okay. Uh, Rail, Railtex bought it, it became the right. New England Central. And Railtex sold out to Rail America, and then uh, it's now the Genesee of Wyoming bought it. It's being run by the GNW now. And it's all uh, on the north end of the railroad. It's all nighttime. It's 444. It doesn't leave until Amtrak gets in. Uh, you yeah. might be able to get a couple shots this time of the year, but otherwise, it's a nighttime railroad. Okay. So Amtrak runs on air and nighttime freight. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Beautiful scenery. Some sections I have never been to, and that's that's one of them. So that's a very cool show. Very good show. Very good. Thank you, Marshall and I were uh, were talking a minute ago too about how uh, prevalent like CV box cars and that were everywhere. I I can't tell you the last time I saw a Central Vermont car, and I I kind of look just you know tr as tradition, you know, to see if there's any left. I mean, as all the thousands of CN uh, freight cars that I, I see on an average week or whatever, <clears throat> I, CV cars are even gone, it's, which is kind of sad, you know? Yeah, most, most of them were for the newsprint business, but you don't see much newsprint. They, they might, you might see a few cars in a train today, but everything is digital. Well, they, they definitely yeah. had an extensive uh, roster of freight cars though. I, you know, just, they oh, were yeah. everywhere one time, you know? Yeah, it certainly were. Anything else for Gordy? Thank you, uh, thank you, Gordon. It was an excellent program. Uh, happy to have you as part of our uh, uh, as part of our chapter and uh, as a presenter tonight. Uh, and thanks, I'll man. I'll again mention that if you're not a member yet of the Wisconsin chapter, the NRHS, it's real simple to become one. Just go to our website, www dot n-r-h-s-w-i-s dot o-r-g and just hit the join and renew button it's pretty damn simple so uh, 